Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, I have a lesson for you on rotations, the mathematical turn. So today, you will identify rotations, and you will rotate figures in the coordinate plane. The question I want you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson is how can you tell when a transformation is a rotation, and what effect does a rotation have on congruence? Vocabulary first, transformation describes how a two-dimensional figure moves on the coordinate plane. A transformation is a change in location by sliding, or a translation, turning, which we're doing today, rotation, flipping, which is a reflection, or changing size, which is a dilation. I want to mention that this is the third video in this playlist or this uh, unit of study. I did translations first, reflections second, and today our third video is on rotations. This video does stand alone, but it, there are other videos that will go along with transformations. So let's talk about what a rotation is. A rotation is a figure that changes by rotating or turning about a fixed point called the center of rotation. A rotated figure moves a specified amount, which is measured in degrees, and we call this the angle of rotation. The direction of a rotation needs to be specified as clockwise or counterclockwise so that you know what direction you're turning in. A rotation is always a congruent image. Just like translations and reflections, rotations must result an image that is congruent to the original figure. It cannot change in size or shape. So let's review image. That is a figure after transformation. So when we talk about the original figure, when we transform it, we refer to that new as the image. And we label this image using this prime. So we say that triangle ABC has been transformed to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And this tells whoever's looking at your work that this is the transformed figure and this is the original figure. Congruence is when two figures have the same size and shape. All corresponding sides and corresponding angles of these shapes will have the same measures. Here we go. Let's go over understanding a rotation. I'm going to start with a clock because that's typically what we refer to as counterclockwise or clockwise, so I thought that'd be a great way for us to make a connection. So to review, we're going to have a center of rotation, which your clock hands are rotating about that center of rotation. So they're either nailed in there, but they're secured at that center, and the clock hands move about that point. So this is the center of rotation of the clock, and the hands never move from that point. They move around, but are anchored by that point. And you're going to do this in the coordinate plane in a few minutes. So clockwise is when we go to the right, just like when a clock moves, that's clockwise, that's where that word comes from. If you go counterclockwise, you're going in the opposite direction, almost like you're going back in time. So you're going counter to how time would be kept. So let's model some of the words that you'll see. So your instructions could say, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So when we look at the coordinate plane, just like we do on a clock here, we're going to do 90 degrees is a quarter turn. So we're going to rotate our clock. So 12 went from this position 90 degrees in the clockwise fashion, which is a quarter turn. So this is our image of a rotation 90 degrees clockwise of the clock. Notice that the center of rotation has not changed. So let's go back to the original. Now we're going to talk about rotating 180 degrees. Notice that there is no direction here. It does not say clockwise or counterclockwise. That's because when you rotate 180 degrees, it doesn't matter what direction you go, you end in the same spot. So if I go clockwise 180 degrees, or I go counterclockwise 180 degrees, I end up at the same spot, the same location. My center of rotation is not going to change. Here we go. So notice the 12 when a full 180 degrees. Think about a straight angle. So this straight angle is 180 degrees, 
or you could call it a half of a turn. One quarter, two quarters, one half of a turn. So it's kind of like it's upside down. Well, it is upside down. So let's restart it. And now the direction is going to be rotate 270 degrees clockwise. So we're going to go 90, 180, and an additional 90 to get to 270 degrees. So our 12 that's right here is going to travel around in a clockwise motion until it gets to this location. My center is not going to change. And there you have it. So I want to look at this for a minute with you. We went clockwise 270 degrees. I want to mention to you that if you went counterclockwise 90 degrees, it would end up with the same image. So in this case, a, nine, a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise ends up with the same image as rotating 270 degrees clockwise. So there you have that. Back to the original. Now it's your turn. We have the pi symbol right here, and you're being asked to rotate the pi symbol 270 degrees clockwise. I want you to identify which image shows the correct rotation. Go ahead and think about this, pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the correct solution is D. If I traveled around about the center and 90 degrees would have this tipped on its side, so this would be a 90 degree rotation clockwise, 180 degrees would have it upside down, and then another 90 degrees is going to bring this little side, not the curly Q side, this side up to this location right here, and that's our D. So there's a couple strategies that I don't know what your teacher would give you. I can give my t students tracing paper, or a uh, geometry teacher would call it patty paper, kind of like between hamburger patties, it's clear, like a wax paper. You could use, turn your actual computer. I let my students pick up their laptops and actually turn it. So you could pick your computer up and turn it 90, 180, 270, and visualize where it goes. Um, or maybe some, some students can do it just by looking. I think rotations are the hardest because of having to imagine how it goes. But tracing paper works, turning your actual computer works, so you need to find a strategy that works for you. So now let's talk about rotating a figure about the origin, and again, the origin of the coordinate plane is zero, zero. So we're going to have this as our center of rotation. So imagine putting a pencil right here at this origin, and if this were a piece of paper, that you would flip the piece of paper, but the pencil would not move from the spot. So you're going to see how we're going to rotate this triangle ABC 180 degrees about the origin. Notice that there's no counterclockwise or clockwise direction because 180 degrees is the same for both of those. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this, and I am I've just all I've done is flipped the image 180 degrees. I also want you to notice I'm going to go back. So we're in the first quadrant here, and we're going to go 180 degrees. So we're either going to go 90, 180, or 90, 180. So if you think about four quadrants and each of them being a 90 degree shift, so if I'm going to go clockwise, one, two turns. So you can think about this as two quarter turns or a full half turn. So my image needs to show up here, which is our third quadrant. So what all I've done is imagine this was a piece of paper and your pencil is right here and you've turned it two quarter turns to end up halfway around. So what I do is I do this. This is how I imagine it. So you could have even had your computer turned upside down. And what you do is I just know where the new location is. So A is at would be negative 5, negative 7. So when you're looking at this coordinate plane, I understand that my negative numbers are here, but I'm imagining that this coordinate plane is in the right direction because this is where the shape would go. So A would have an ordered pair of negative 5, negative 7. B would have an ordered pair of negative 1, negative 3. And C prime would be negative 8, negative 5. Now I'm going to flip it back around because now I have my original image 
and I've graphed, now that I've written down all the new locations of my ordered pairs for my image, I now have gone and graphed the image. So for me, that's a strategy that works. All right, your turn. I'm gonna ask you to rotate this triangle ABC 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So if you don't have graph paper, I would suggest that you just write down the image ordered pairs on a piece of paper. Go ahead and pause and come back and check your work when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So again, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn, and here's where I did one quarter turn with my paper, and this is where my original triangle turned out. So I'm gonna write down my ordered pairs. This is gonna be A prime, which is six, seven, B prime, zero, six, C is at one, two. So now that I know my new locations, I can turn my graph back around. My original image is where it's supposed to be, and I'm gonna graph the image on paper. So once again, if you were using a computer, you could pick it, physically pick it up, and turn it one turn to the right, because this is a quarter turn, write down where those ordered pairs would go, and then you could go to your device or your graph paper and graph these three points, and there you have your image or you can use tracing paper as well. And then on the tracing paper, just anchor your pencil here on top of the tracing paper and physically draw this, trace this triangle, and turn your patty paper. All right, now we're gonna talk about rotating a figure about a vertex. So this is asking us to take triangle ABC, which is right here, graphed in the fourth quadrant, and 90 degrees counterclockwise about vertex A. So counterclockwise means we're going left. We're going up into the first quadrant. We're going up 90 degrees. So that means I'm going a quarter of a turn. But the difference here is I'm not going about the origin. If my pencil were anchored here, which we would do, it'd be right around this. So the first thing I want to note is that if we're going about vertex A, vertex A is not changing because this is our pivot point. And remember, our center of rotation does not change. So I can automatically tell you right now, I know for certain that A prime is the ordered pair one, negative two. Now let's think about this. B is gonna go one quarter turn up. So we know that this side is one, two, three, four, five units long. So I can go one, two, three, four, five units up and know that my new ordered pair for B prime is going to be one, three. And then C prime is gonna be one, two, three units to the right with an ordered pair of four, negative two. So you can use the side measurements, use your graph paper, use the units of measure when you know how things are moving. So this one looks very different when we're not going around the origin and you're pivoting around this point. Just keep in mind that if your center rotation is one of the vertices, that vertice does not change and this is the same as A. So I have an example for you here. I would like you to rotate triangle ABC 90 degrees counterclockwise about vertex C, keeping in mind that vertex C is your center of rotation. Please pause, rotate, come back with your image coordinates. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the first thing I know is that because C is my, vertex C is my center of rotation, that that image is not gonna move, that ordered pair. So the image C prime is one zero, it will not move. I then know that this side BC is one, two, three, units away from C to get to B, and I know that my size does not change, that the new figure has to be congruent. I'm going in a counterclockwise direction, so I'm gonna go a quarter of a turn, and instead of being to the right three units, I'm gonna be above C three units, so I know that my ordered pair B prime is gonna be one, three. Then from here, I can imagine, you could have either turned your um, computer or you can just count, but I now know that this side AB is one, two, three, four, five units. 
So to go from B to A, I need to go five. One, two, three, four, five. So my A prime ordered pair needs to be negative four, positive three. And now I can graph my image and you can see that it has pivoted around and you could have turned it down to here, a quarter of a turn, it went 90 degrees counterclockwise about vertex C. So there you have it, rotations, which are our mathematical turn, we're turning figures into images in the coordinate plane. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel and get notifications for future videos. I hope you have a great day.